Joining us now to discuss Foreign Minister Lavrov's tour to Africa, we have geopolitical analyst Eugene Chalsowski. Eugene, thanks very much for your time. We heard a little bit there about why uh, Egypt is perhaps the first stop on Lavrov's tour. It's an important relationship for Russia. Talk us through more of the history and the importance of, of Russian-Egyptian relations. Absolutely. So Egypt is a key country for Russia uh, both historically as a Middle Eastern uh, power and an ally during the Soviet era, and more recently uh, during contemporary times um, as a, a way for Russia to show that it has influence uh, not only in the former Soviet periphery, but also in the Middle East and beyond. And right now, Russia is really looking to expand its ties with non-Western countries uh, due to the fallout of, over the war of Ukraine. And so Egypt, uh, in particular, plays an important role in this regard. But Egypt is being careful about not siding with either the West or Russia, likewise with many other African nations. Why is Africa, or many African countries, why are they being so careful about who they side with over this conflict? I think it's for similar reasons that countries like China, India, and even Turkey try to stay out of the, the politics of the Ukrainian conflict, if you will. These are countries that uh, rely on economic relationships with Russia, whether that's for energy supplies or for grain, as we've seen with the recent agreement. Uh, and they don't take that you know, uh, very assertive anti-Russian or pro-Ukrainian stance uh, that many countries in the West do. They, many, in many times, these countries have relations with both Russia and Ukraine. So essentially, they want to uh, keep up ties for pragmatic and economic reasons, most of all. Interestingly, though, of course, Africa is the place that's suffering the most along the Middle East in terms of the, the lack of grain that's able to leave Ukraine. Lavrov has rejected accusations that Russia was exporting famine and blamed it on Western propaganda. How does Russia measure this when it openly signed a deal to release the grain that's been held up in the port of Odessa? Right. Well, this is a, an issue of narratives, if you will, because obviously uh, Ukraine and the West has blamed Russia for this growing grain crisis that we're seeing globally, uh, whereas Russia is, is pointing the finger at the West, so to speak. But what So when you say it's a narrative, a situation of narratives, Russia signed this deal saying, yes, it would release the grain, did it not? No, it did. And so this is the, the key element, is that they're trying to move forward because both Russia and Ukraine and the world at large are suffering as a result of the blockage of the grain exports, not only from Ukraine, but also Russia due to the, the sanctions and their impact. So there is a pragmatic reason for them to strike the deal. We'll see how it's implemented moving forward, but both sides, I think, have an interest in seeing it uh, proceed. Yeah, and it's a blockage that, that Russia has been uh, blockading supposedly. Now, by using phrases like, we'll help you complete the process of decolonization in reference to African nations, is Sergei Lavrov trying to convince African countries that they are better off siding with Russia than the West? Well, I think this again points to, you know, the interest of Russia to, to advance its own narrative. But I think for, for many of these African countries, um, and including Egypt, their interest is not to side with one, uh, with either Russia or the West, but really to, to do business with both. And unfortunately, the, the world is suffering and Africa is suffering as a result of the prolonged conflict in Ukraine. And so the, the grain deal, if it moves forward, is at least a, a sign that this is something that can be uh, addressed, at least from a tactical standpoint, if not from the, the broader strategic um, you know, prolongation of this conflict. And do you think that Russia has every intention to keep this, keep its word on this grain deal? I think when it comes to the grain supplies themselves, yes. But as we've seen with the recent uh, missile attacks on Odessa, Russia is drawing a very fine line between the grain exports and uh, continuing to target uh, Ukraine's military assets. So that could absolutely have a scuttling impact, uh, whether that's just from a technical perspective or if there leads to more political fallout. But I think, as I mentioned before, for economic reasons, Russia does have an interest in seeing these grain supplies uh, unlocked and going to these markets. All right, Eugene, really appreciate your insight there. Eugene Chalsowski for us there, geopolitical analyst.